Welcome back to Sustainable Energy. Today we're looking at how green chemistry is being adopted by industries, companies and the scientific community. Now, CO2 gets a lot of bad press for being a greenhouse gas that contributes to global warming. But in south of France, liquid CO2 is being put to good use in the wine industry. Frédéric Vaquer has been making wine since 1991 at the century-old family domain in the French Pyrenees. She produces 35,000 bottles a year for the international market. Her worst nightmare, tainted wine. One time I was with a lot of customers and it was a very important testing. And uh, I opened a magnum and I, I had only one magnum. And normally it's, it's a beautiful wine. And that time it was corky. A good wine reminds me of my roots, my little corner, my country. And a good wine relies on its closure. 70% of the world's wine bottles still use cork. It's a natural, waterproof material, but permeable to air. Sometimes it can lead to chemical reactions that will taint the wine. It's mainly caused by the presence of a chemical compound known as TCA, trichloroanisole. Even the tiniest amounts can cause musty aromas and flavors. But one company had an idea. This is the French facility of the Diam Closure Company. In these plants, nearly half a billion cork closure are manufactured and sold worldwide. Usually perceived as a pollutant, CO2 in fact turned out to be the best nature-based solution to removing TCA and other volatile compounds. To get rid of these volatile compounds, we are pressurizing the CO2 in order to have a specific property of the CO2, which is called supercritical, to go inside the cork structure and extract the volatilized compounds from the cork. The diamond process is looking like these creamy liquids. When we are smelling these extract, it really smells moldy. It's full of TCA. Once TCA has been removed, the purified cork granules are mixed with castor oil and beeswax to create a 100% natural cork that is watertight and protects the wine against any capillary action. And there's more. The extracted components do not go to waste. Different companies are actually purchasing our extract coming from the cork to use the extract for their cosmetic applications. There is actually no scraps. Everything is utilized. We use all the cork. What is scrapped is the woody part. The woody part will produce steam because we will burn it, which will bring us the energy to warm up the process, to warm up, for example, the CO2, because to have a good extraction, we need to reach a temperature of 60 degrees Celsius. A key member of the team who patented this process was Stéphane Serrade. Eventually, they saved Yam from bankruptcy at the end of the 1990s. Back then, Sarad had just graduated with a PhD in food chemistry and was also a pioneer of green chemistry in France. They arrived in my laboratory uh, driving a, a, a black Mercedes uh, with people with a nice suit arriving with a bag full of cork stopper. And uh, they started to say, OK, we don't have any knowledge about scientific and technical processes. We are just looking for a solution in order to obtain safe cork stopper with a guarantee of no content of trichloroanisole. Today, Diam is a global leader in cork closure manufacturing, selling over 2 billion corks across 67 countries. Meanwhile, Sarad has continued to explore the properties of supercritical CO2 for other industries. Supercritical CO2 is unique in terms of green chemistry processes. In fact, with supercritical CO2, you can extract organic molecule and then obtain pure aroma, pure flavor, and you can also obtain decaffeinated coffee. Back in the Pyrenees, the Diam factory continues to research and invest in green solutions to meet the demand of the $225 billion wine market. Every year, Diam purchases 33,000 tons of cork from producers in France and Spain helping to keep this industry alive.
I'm back with Paul Anastas. He's talking to us from Connecticut in the United States while I'm in Paris. Thank you, Paul, for being with us. It's such a pleasure being with you. We saw a company using nature-based solutions like bees, wax, and castor oil. What other nature-based solutions are popular in green chemistry? Well, it's wonderful because people ask me, you know, how do we know that green chemistry is is going to be able to be used by industry and if industry isn't using it systematically yet? And I say, because I can look outside and I see that nature is our greatest sustainable model. Nature is our greatest design teacher and design mentor. And so the best tool in the green chemistry toolbox is biomimicry, the way of mimicking natural systems. What's the relationship between business and science when it comes to green chemistry? Well, green chemistry, we think of as the innovation energy. People think I'm joking when they ask, how did you come up with this name green chemistry all those years ago? And I say, it's true that green is the color of the environment, but here in the US, it's also the color of our money. So this was about how you accomplish both goals at the same time, that you align environmental and health goals with your economic and profitability goals. But green has a third definition too. It's young, fresh, new. So green chemistry is not the old chemistry of the past. It's this young, fresh, new, inventive, innovative way of making the things of our modern life. What needs to be done to raise awareness of green chemistry? Government needs to set up the environment for, for investment, for fundamental basic research, and to encourage the commercialization of green chemistry solutions. Thank you, Professor. It's now time for a quick break. When we return, we head to Auckland in New Zealand to find out how electronic waste, such as televisions and old phones, could be a golden opportunity. Nearly 50% of the value of e-waste comes from the gold that's used in the circuitry. Uh -huh.